Masood, anhu, relates, the Holy Prophet وسلم, said a true action leads to a true path a path of virtue and good deeds the virtue path leads a person towards paradise and the person continues to speak the truth until the truth he sees the truth in the sight of Allah in the sight of Allah that individual is named as sadiq the truthful lying leads to vice and vice leads to indecent acts and if a person goes on lying till in the sight of Allah he is named a liar Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim So Ibn Masood, may Allah have mercy on him relates the Prophet ﷺ has taught us that we have two paths a path of truth and a path of lying and we car- when we carry on walking upon that path of truth when we are both truthful in our actions truthful in our speech when we say we'll do something we do it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sight of Allah we become as sadiq the truthful but if an individual lies and his character is a character of lying everything he does he lies about in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that person will be named a liar and this is narrated in two major books of authentic hadith Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim what is hadith? Hadith are the sayings and actions of the Prophet ﷺ. And two of the most famous books of hadith are Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim. Hazrat Hassan bin Ali radiallahu anhu relates that he learned the following from the Prophet ﷺ. Leave alone that which involves doubt and adhere to that which is free from doubt. For truth is comforting and falsehood is disturbing. So something you're sure about, something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made clear to us, adhere to that, stick to that, follow that, and walk upon that path. But something you're not sure about, the Prophet ﷺ advised us, stay away from. Because the Prophet ﷺ has said, truth is comforting. Something we know, something we understand, comforts us. But falsehood is disturbing, something we can't understand, something we can't, we can't not comprehend, disturbs us. Hazrat Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu relates, The Prophet wasallam, in his statement about Heraclius, in a letter he wrote, The Prophet wasallam said, he tells us, worship Allah and worship Allah alone, and do not associate anything with Allah. So this is something which is core towards Islam, that we worship Allah and we worship Him alone, that we seek His strength and we seek His forgiveness and we seek His might. In times of difficulty, in terms of trials, in times of tribulations, we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In times of happiness, in times of gratefulness, we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Allah can trial us both with good and both with bad. If he trials us with good, that means Allah could give us so much wealth, so much happiness that we forget to thank Allah for it. We become so engrossed in having fun, in enjoying ourselves, we forget to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same way we can be trialed with difficulty, that we go through difficulty, we go through praying and we turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So both can be trials. You can be trialed with happiness, you can be trialed with hardship. But within this trial, within this difficulty, my brothers, we have two options. 
one, we are successful, one, we pass this test, or we fail this test. And if we pass this test, that means we do which is pleasing to Allah. So if we go into difficulties, we turn to Allah. We seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether we're laying down, whether we're sitting down, whether we're sleeping or we're standing, we turn to Allah and we turn to Allah alone. And Allah is sufficient for the needs of the believers. Allah is sufficient for all mankind. And if we fail this test, failing this test is turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turning away from the kitab Allah, the Quran. Turning away from the speech of Allah, the Quran. Turning away from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu this is indeed failing our test. My brothers, I don't care if you're a Muslim, Christian, Jew or whatever you are, no matter what we are, every one of us, every one of us will one day visit the grave. Whether they are Jews, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, atheists, death is inevitable for us all. Allah says, Kulluhum zaikatul mawt Every soul shall taste death. Every soul shall taste death. My brothers, no matter who we are, we shall face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter who we are, when we die, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question us. Question us of our actions. Question us of our intentions. Question us upon our exam. And fortunate are those who will receive the exam upon their right hand. And unfortunate are those who receive the deeds upon their left hand. My brothers, fortunate are those whose good deeds are many. And unfortunate are those whose good deeds are few. My brothers, when we live upon this land, when we walk every step that we take, when every action that we make should be an act of sadaqah, should be an act of charity, should be an act of goodness, should be upon that which the Prophet ﷺ was upon. And we should follow the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For we are not Ahlul Bidah, we are the people of the Sunnah. We are people who follow the Sunnah to whatever end. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who in times of difficulty, in times of need, in times of tribulations, that we turn to Allah and we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So when it says, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Fatiha, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَئِينَ You alone do we worship, you alone do we ask for help. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَئِينَ You alone do we worship, you alone do we ask for help. You alone do we worship, you alone do we ask for help. Every raqaf salah, we narrate the same thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who act upon this, who understand this, whose hearts beat upon this. You alone do we worship and you alone do we ask for help. Allah says in the Quran, in chapter 9, verse 199, 119. O oh, you who believe, Ya amanu, be careful of your duty to Allah and be with the truthful. So Allah says to the believers, those who have reached the rank of Ayyuhalladheena Amanu, that be careful of your duty to Allah. So be conscious of your duty to Allah. You're here for a reason. You're here for a purpose and your duty is unto Allah and be with the truthful. The Prophet ﷺ said, you are upon the religion of your friends. The Prophet ﷺ said, your company is what defines you. The Prophet ﷺ said, show me your company and I will show you who you are. And again, the Prophet ﷺ uses a metaphor. He says the good company is like the bearer of musk, the bearer of fragrance. Just by being in their company, you smell good, you feel good. And the bad company is like the blacksmith. If you're just around them, if you touch something by accident, your hands become black. The smell around you becomes black. The smell around you starts to smell just by being around the atmosphere. If you touch your clothes by accident, your clothes become black. If you touch your face by accident, you might get spots on your face. You're surrounded by grease. And that's the way your company defines you. If you're around pious people, righteous people, people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
people who observe the salah my brothers just by being in their company they pray five times a day and if you're around the company of people who do not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who worship their desires who worship the world who worship the things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden to worship and what is forbidden to worship everything except Allah and what should we worship Allah and Allah alone so my brothers when you're around people who worship the dunya who worship the desires just by being in their company by being surrounded by them you will end up just like them so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to be around the best of company amongst the believers amongst those when they hear the adhan they are the first ones in the masajid of Allah those when the name of Allah is called they fear Allah when the name of the Prophet is mentioned, they say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My brothers, these are the people who have righteousness. And the Prophet said, There has risen the best Ummah amongst you who do good and they forbid evil. So this is the characteristics of the believer. We are an Ummah and a nation which promotes good and forbids evil. The Prophet said, Allah loves the strong believer. Allah loves the strong believer. He loves the strong believer more than the weak believer. For the strong believer defends Islam. The strong believer defends justice. The strong believer defends truth. And the weak believer, my brothers in Islam, could not even defend himself. When, he's, when there's a tyrant creating tyranny, the weak believer is scared to speak up. The strong believer is the first one to speak for the truth. The first one to defend Islam. The first one to fight for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are strong in their deen, who are strong in their iman, who are strong in their character, and of those who are truthful, they do not fear when they speak. They speak that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they say something, they say something which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do not fear the world. Their conscience is only on one thing. Allah, 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 Allahu Akbar. Their conscience, their mind, their heart, their actions, their intentions inclines to one thing and one thing alone, meeting their Rabb, meeting Allah. The moment they step in their grave for them is happiness. It's not a moment of tears, but a moment of happiness. They're going back to meet Allah. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked, would you like your death now or later? He said, I want it now. What does that show? The Prophet ﷺ wanted to go back to his creator, wanted to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, we should love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should love to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our actions, our intentions, our hearts should be inclined to one thing and one thing alone. That is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim. وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا أذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أكيم السلام الله 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 الله